Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Offensive VBA series. Um, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at um, how to develop a reverse shell macro, uh, but with a small twist. So, you know, I think we've probably covered this already. Um, and then I think this will be the last, uh, or I should say the... Um, it'll sort of be the video that will help us bridge the gap um you know we took a break in the adverse emulation series uh to cover this process you know the process of developing a macro for initial access so after this we'll then resume with emulating fin6 and we'll you know pretty much uh move on into the active directory uh pen testing side of things but anyway um as the title of this video suggests we are going to be leveraging a tool uh, or a script called powercat so I'm currently on my Windows uh, virtual machine here and I've just RDP'd into my uh, Kali Linux system and I'm just going to maximize this and I'll just uh, head over into my browser and I'm currently on the PowerCat GitHub repository right over here. Apologies if my connection is a little bit slow. And uh, this is the, um, the script in question. Uh, by the way, all credits go to the uh, to the author again link will be in the description section but you may be asking yourself what exactly is powercat well um as it uh, suggests right over here um it's uh, netcat the powershell version or it's uh, it's sort of the equivalent of netcat but again in powershell and uh, in this particular case you know it's quite old but you'll see how powerful it is you know uh, it pretty much supports powershell version 2 and later um, and there's many ways you can go about using this particular script or module if you will um, and let me just give you a basic or brief introduction um, so as it says right over here powercat is a powershell function which means you first need to load the function be uh, before you can execute it you can put one of the you know one of the um, following commands that are outlined below here into your PowerShell profile, so on and so forth. But in any case, this is what, you know, you're able to do. So just think of it as a um, very, very powerful um, netcat implementation. Um, and, you know, given that it's PowerShell, the idea is to have something similar to netcat, but um, again, for Windows. So, with Linux, as you know, it's fairly simple. If you have Netcat installed on a target Linux system, you can either, you know, set up a listener on the target system. And that, in that case, you'll have a bind shell or you'll essentially be connecting to the port that you're listening on on the target. Or you can tell the target to, co to connect to your listener. Um, and uh, in this case, you know, PowerCat, just like Netcat can work in, um, can serve two purposes. You can set up a listener and uh, you can also you know connect to a listener so um as, you know other than that if you want a detailed um review of powercat and how it can be used in different ways just let me know in the comment section i'll make a video on that the best way to show you how this works again is in the form of a macro so what i've done and by the way this github repo only has one script the powershell um script right over here so you can just download it. I've uh, downloaded it to my desktop on the Kali Linux system. So you can see I have it here. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to set up a, a web server here on uh, port 8080 to host it. And then I'm going to set up a Netcat listener. Uh, you can also use PowerCat if you want on the listener side, uh, if you are you know uh, receiving a reverse connection, but you know, in this case, I'll say sudo netcat and VLP. And in this case, I'll use uh, creative port 1337, right? Um, and I'll hit enter. Okay, so we have this going. I'm now going to uh, minimize my Kali Linux system and we're going to open up Word here. I'm going to create a blank document um, and I'll go ahead and save this on my desktop as uh, we'll just call this uh, PowerCat. Of course, in reality, this is not something you should be doing, but for the sake of demonstration, we'll create it. So doc, uh, macro enable document, so docm macros, and I'll click on um, the macros in this particular document and I'll create one here. We'll just call it PowerCat. So very, very simple. And I'll open up the VBA IDE. Very, very simple, very nice. Um, okay, so 
we have the PowerCat uh, subroutine here. I'm going to create um, two predefined subroutines to control what happens when the document is opened. Um, so I already mentioned, I've already covered the auto open subroutine here, but we also have another one called the document open uh, subroutine, which essentially does as uh, the name suggests it'll execute the macro once you, you know the user actually clicks on run macro or, or enable content it'll automatically uh, run the macro again when the document is opened um, so what we're going to do is we'll create it here so sub and uh, document open is its name and in here we're just going to call powercat well not call it we're just going to specify the macro the subroutine we want to run so power cat like so in both of them just as a fail safe uh, so now in the power cat subroutine we are going to need to create two variables so the first one i'll create is the uh, variable called url and this is going to be of type string because it's going to store a string and then we'll create one to to hold the powershell script or command so we can just call it um ps script how about that as string okay so first things first let's specify what we're going to store in the url variable so in this case it's going to be the um the address of the web server that's hosting powercat which we've already set up in my case it's going to be my kali linux system on my local network the ip address of my kali linux system is 192.168.224 we set up the web server on port 8080 and then, of course, powercat.ps1. Okay, very, very nice, simple. And then PS script, this is going to hold the PowerShell IEX or invoke, ex uh, invoke execution uh, command that will essentially download the powercat um, script. And then um, after that's done, it'll, you know, execute powercat and tell it to connect to our listener which, you know, in the case of the Kali Linux system is a Netcat listener um, on port 1337. And then we'll specify the, um, we sp we'll specify that we want to execute, uh, you know, we just want a basic uh, command shell or a command prompt, if you will. So I'll say uh, IEX and then in here we'll, you know, create a new um, object new object and then uh, system dot net.web client um, and then uh, download string and then in here we will specify the URL so URL and we just uh, concatenate there so uh, yeah and then we say with powercat so if you remember the instructions in uh, on the github repo powercat and then connect in this case we're not listening we're connecting back to the Kali Linux listener 192, this is where I specify the IP address of the Kali Linux system. 24, uh, the port we, you know, that you have the listener running on, in this case 1337, and then uh, E, uh, execute CMD, right? Um, okay, so now we can utilize shell and say, you know, powershell.exe, and then specify all the PowerShell options here. So execution policy this is bypass and then we can say you know um, window style for example uh, hidden and then we can say uh, because we want to concatenate here uh, we want to then include the totality or whatever ps script is storing which in this case will include um, right over here because this is going sequentially it'll include the url which i've already specified so um ps script and then we say uh we're gonna concatenate here and that's one two three four then we specify vb hide uh sorry my bad uh, like so all right so that should work without any issues and now I'm going to save my macro, which I've just done. And I'm not going to debug. We'll, we'll find out if we've made a mistake. I'll just give it a run through one more time. And uh, there we go. Okay, that looks nice. No issues. Close this up and save the document. And now I'll bring up the Kali Linux system. 
So right over here, we can see that we have the web server. So we'll be monitoring this as I open the document. Um, let me resize this because I want to be able to see this. And I'll open up Word here really quickly so I can resize the window again so you can see that there. Okay, so I'll now open up the PowerCAD document here and we'll enable the macro or run it. And there we are. We can see we get a GET request to our web server hosting PowerCAD. And if we take a look at our listener, indeed, we get a reverse shell, you know, essentially a command prompt if you will, or a command shell. And uh, yeah, so very, very basic, but, uh, you know, very minimal in terms of uh, resources. And of course, because we used IEX, uh, it's being executed in memory. There's nothing being saved on the disk, so no payloads or anything like this. Um, and uh, yeah, so if I say system info, let's see this here. There we are. We can confirm that. And, uh, you know, if I say uh, right over here, let me maximize this. So I say... Uh, admin yeah there we are and then you know we can proceed to privilege escalation and all that good stuff but uh, yeah so that's uh, what i wanted to highlight in this video nothing crazy uh link to powercat the github repo will be in the description section if you have any questions or comments or if you have um, you know any recommendations please leave them in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video, found value in it, please leave a like down below and uh, I will be seeing you in the next video.